Hi everyone, Teresa Campbell here, Be Next Entertainment. So glad to have you on live Sunday, February 21st. I'm really happy because tomorrow is Happy Margarita Day, National Margarita Day. <laughs> anyway, um, it's been a minute since I've been on live broadcast, but I'm back very excited uh you know just to keep it fun and live and in color so uh i'm a little dehydrated been running a little bit more uh, so i'm drinking some tea and having some lemon in it so again welcome happy sunday i am doing this on google and meerkat so hi to everyone out there meerkat land today um I want to talk briefly about, I've had some successes recently. Yay. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> um, I've been working with a client and we're doing some great things. We uh, recently closed a deal for him to moderate the small business expos. Uh, he recently did the expo in Houston. It was a great success. And if you were in Houston, I hope you really enjoyed it. And what I wanted to talk about, because I do work with people who are either getting clients or uh, closing deals on their own. And I really wanted to talk about the art of closing the deal, the art of closing the deal and five classic phrases that you can use to really help you close the deal. So um, I will go through this briefly. If you have any questions, feel free to, um, hi, Meerkat Land. Who do I have here? Oh, I don't see a name. Anyway, if you wanna give me a shout out, go ahead and give me a shout out. You can find me at Boss Chick Teresa. Again, Boss Chick, C-H-I-C, -C, Teresa, T-H-E-R-E-S-A. And um, would love to hear or see you comment. Anyway the art of closing the deal and here's where i find this really interesting a lot of people want more business but they don't like to sell and in order to have more business whether you are having more clients or you're selling tchotchkes jewelry clothes fashion whatever the case may be you have to be a salesperson as an entrepreneur as a business owner you're really a salesperson first and foremost um, you have to have a lot of confidence. You're going to have to have a lot of chutzpah, as they say. You have to not take things personally in order to close the deal. Again, it's February 21st, and we've had some great success already. I'm also in the midst of closing a deal with University of Phoenix uh, for a series of speaking events over a year and a half across several campuses. So we're really looking forward to that, very excited about that. Um, lots of other things in the works. What I find in closing the deal is really important is having a goal in mind. Um, it may be money, it may be relationship, it may be um, you know, building rapport, it may be getting six speaking engagements, really understand at the end of the, of the day what your goal is. And basically, here's what I want you to do. Get a pen, get a paper, write some of these things down. Let me know if they help you. So basically, I want you to get details about what you're negotiating. And that means how many events do they have a budget? ask a lot of questions of if it's an event and i'm going to talk to you mainly from what i typically negotiate so you can use these for your situation um so basically if it's an event how many events have they had is this new what do they want the attendees to uh walk away with um what type of audience do they have? How old are they? You need some of those demographics about the audience. And what has worked in the past? What would they like to improve? Um, 
maybe they have a dream list of what they want and they haven't been able to achieve that. So uh, maybe go for that list as well. Get a lot of details. I mean, you really, at this early phase in the um, early stage in the negotiations, cannot ask too many questions. Over communicate, make sure you have all of the information that you need because as you go along through the negotiation process, um, all of those tools will come in handy for you. So make sure that you have all of the details, make sure you have a contract, make sure you have an agreement. Um, when your negotiations go sideways, and they will, when your event goes sideways, and it will, the contract and the agreement that you have will help you, will keep you from, um, you know, having bad energy, bad blood, bad relationship. The contract I find and the agreement I find that you end up signing with your um, new potential partner uh, really helps you guys have a great relationship at the end of the day. So make sure you have an agreement. Um, make sure you have a contract. It can be very simple or it can, you know, you go ahead and pay a lawyer <laughs> if you want. You don't have to. Uh, just as long as you guys put down what you agreed to. Dates, make sure you're covered as far as when you're going to receive money. If you are talking about it on uh, in your negotiations and you agree to it in the negotiation, it should be in your contract. And if it isn't in your contract, it doesn't work. It really just doesn't work. It, it won't stand up in court. So I make a point to put everything in the contract. So if you guys are sharing photos and videos. We recently had this situation where um, we had agreed, everybody's using different photographers and different videographers. And we put in the contract that we would share the information, share the uh, video coverage, the footage and photography. And we put in there also when those files would be shared. So you can never, you know, I find the more detail you have in your contract, the better. So I won't be labored with that. You know how I feel about it. <laughs> make sure you have an agreement. Make sure you have a contract. The next is to obtain co-signment or agreement from the green lighter. I call it a green lighter, the person who can green light the project. No need in having 25,000 conversations with someone only to get to the last part <laughs> where you want to sign a deal. And that's not even the person who can sign the contractor. That's not even the person who can green light. I've done this before where I'm talking to someone and you think that is the person who's in charge and they're not more power to those who want to be in charge however when it comes to business and signing money getting money you want to make sure you're talking to the person who can sign the check who can give you the credit card or at least the person who can tell sally sue <laughs> to give you the credit card so do that early on in your conversations do that before you get too far and you waste a lot of your time and energy because as a business owner um time is money and I am not trying to waste any of mine. <laughs> so the next is always, and I'm, you know, I wish I could remember all of this stuff. So I am looking at some notes. Uh, always, always, always go into your negotiations with a win-win frame of mind. I know you've heard it before, but here's where I find a lot of business owners fail. They go in already with this negative, um, you know, they're not going to give me my all the money that I want or they don't have the resources that I want. Or, you know, if you're already thinking that way, when you have those conversations, then it's going to color all every talk and every phone call. Go in with the win win. And when I say go in with the win win, I mean also to go in with your highest number. Don't sell yourself short uh, before you even start the conversation. So if I know that my highest number is 10,000, 
I'm not going to, in the first few conversations, say, well, I'll give you a discount. You know what I mean? So go in with the win-win. Go in thinking that they have the resources, unless they tell you ahead of time that they don't have the resources. I always you know, I'm a big believer in meditation. I'm a big believer in that I, whatever I think I can achieve, whatever I put into my mind and whatever I say and whatever I plan for, I will get it. I will work hard until I get it. So always say your highest number. Give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Raise your bar. So I always, always, always have a win-win in mind. I know that I produce perfect events. I know that I get my clients the highest dollar. I know that I'm thinking the best for everybody involved in the relationship and in the partnership. So there's no reason for me to sell myself short. So same with you. Always have win-win in mind. The next and the last one is probably the most important is to listen. <laughs> uh, don't assume anything. Ask a lot of questions. Ask why when you're in your negotiations and you're trying to close a deal. Ask questions. Um, why do you feel like the last event wasn't a success? Why do you feel like your audience would want more interaction with the moderator? What? Just keep asking why. And when you ask those questions, I want you to shut up and I want you to listen to what your potential uh, partner is saying, what your prospect is saying. The more you allow them to talk, the more you're gonna get information that you can use later on down the road when you are either close the deal and now you're having your event or during your final contract negotiations, the more you allow them to talk, the more they say, the more you, one, develop a relationship with them, and two, the more, um, again, you will have in your arsenal, your back pocket, to help keep the relationship on track. So with that, I wanna tell you some closings that I love to use. Now, again, I know I don't look like, you know, typical saleswoman, but I love it. And it's not so much whether you're a saleswoman or a salesman or not, is whether or not you want to build an empire or not, whether you want to be a business person or not, whether you want to live your dream life or not. So I am of the frame of mind that if I set a goal for myself, I want to smash it. I want to demolish it. I want to blow it out of the water. And whomever I need to talk to, to make it happen, I will talk to that person. Whomever I need to call, it can be the CEO, it can be the CMO, it can be Susie down the street, I will have a conversation with that person. Um, I find in business that you really need to uh, be that woman who has no fear. So with that said, here are some closings uh, classic classic types of closings you've heard them before but i just felt like it was pretty cool to come on um and just share with those who they may not feel comfortable selling what these closings are so the assumptive close you're talking to someone and they're you feel like it's going pretty good you have a relationship you're laughing they're talking you're talking they're asking questions you're asking questions and everything's going pretty cool and you're like you know what you know when that happens, you get this feeling and you're like, hey, maybe we should close. So you can say something like this. It's called the assumptive close. Uh, help me understand your process for finalizing the contract. Help me understand your process for uh, closing a particular deal like this. Help me understand your process. And you can add whatever you want to the end of that. Again, it's an assumptive close comes in very, very handy. The second one is a reverse close. Reverse close sounds something like this. Is there a reason why if I could take care of A, B, C for you that we couldn't sign this deal tomorrow? So that's a reverse. Is there a reason why if I were to lower this uh, product for you 10% that we couldn't, you couldn't buy it today. 
again, reverse and work it, you know, use your own words. Here's the one thing I will say, make it natural. Don't sound like you're all stiff and whatnot. Um, make it your own. So that's the reverse. The next one is direct. Well, the last two are direct, different versions of a direct close. So it sounds like this. It looks like we've answered all of your questions, Bob. Let's go ahead and move forward. Something like that. So again, pseudo direct, I'll call it. It looks like we've answered all of your questions, Mary. <laughs> Shall we go ahead and move forward? And again, make it yours. I'm giving you words here, but I want you to uh, take my words, make it your own, make sure you practice, practice, practice. I've been doing this for a while. I've been in business now for six years. <laughs> Yay. Um, this is the first year I have to say that I really had fun um, all the while I've always sold. So again, the pseudo direct close is it looks like we've answered all of your questions teresa shall we go ahead and move forward all right and the last one you got it is very direct so let's go ahead and move forward and just call it what it is and that's exactly the last close is exactly the close that i used with the small business expo it we had had our negotiations we talked everybody was happy with their deal uh, negotiations and it was like you know what let's go ahead and move forward and they said okay so basically um that's excuse the phone <laughs> i have several so um that's the art of closing the deal i'll be back with more i will do my very 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 best to come back hi meerkat land everybody out there i'll do my best to come back every day and um, just to share, it's some, sometimes I'm gonna do some fun things. Sometimes I'm gonna talk about business because that's what I love. And I will, uh, we have a lot of cool events coming up. So stay tuned for that. Expos and trade shows and speaking engagements, all of that. So I will be back and I hope you enjoyed it. Please on Meerkat, leave a comment. And also on Google Land, Google's taken over our lives. <laughs> In Google Land, please leave a comment. Um, if there's a topic, something you want to talk about, my background includes the entertainment industry, uh, all things creative, all things marketing and branding, and of course, how to grow your business. So if there is a topic that you want me to chat about, leave that comment below. Otherwise, I do appreciate your time on this Sunday afternoon, and I will be back. Take care, everyone. Have a great Sunday. Bye-bye.